Nicolo and Yaya Torre, Gary and Phil Neville, there's actually a surprising amount of brothers playing football at the highest level. And with the emergence of the two Bellinghams and the two Mbappes currently playing at PSG, it made me question, could a team of brothers win the Premier League? So I decided to put that to the test, taking over at Fulham, clearing out their squad and replacing them with our band of brothers. Now there's lots of players in this squad, so let's quickly run through it. We've got Theo Hernandez and Lucas Hernandez, arguably our two best players, 29-year-old Inaki Williams and his promising younger brother, Nico Williams. We've also got Marcus Taram and his brother, Kefren. So if they're as good as their dad was, fingers crossed they'll be good for our team. Arsenal's Jurian Timber has a brother. That's Quinton Timber and they're two of the most versatile players in our whole squad. And then the quality starts to dip a little bit. We've got Nathaniel Shalaber because that allows us to have his brother, Trevor. We've got Timmy Abraham. He's the brother of Roma forward, Tammy. We've got Aaron Ramsey as well as his brother, Jacob. Dortmund's German Felix Nemecha, as well as his brother Lucas. We've got Matty Longstaff, Sean Longstaff, Marcus Tavernier and James Tavernier, as well as youngster Bensi Darde and his older brother Martin Darde. And finally, we've got Zinedine Zidane's son, Theo Zidane, and the reason he's here is so that we can have Lucas Zidane as our goalkeeper. So that was our squad, and you might notice we were missing a few key names, and that's because I wanted to make this challenge a little bit harder. You see, our Fulham side is predicted to finish in ninth place, and I felt if we took some of the best brothers into our team straight away, it would make this a little bit too easy. So here's what's going to happen. Depending on where we finish in the league will determine how many points we get to buy some new pairs of brothers for our team. So for example, after three games, our Fulham team is sitting in 15th place. That means we beat five teams in the table. So we get five points to buy these sets of brothers off the list. Now we're going to have five seasons here with our team of brothers to try and win the Premier League. So hopefully each year we can slowly build up and add some of these superstar names to our side. We've got Lucas Zidane in goal with Timber at right right back, Shalaber at centre back with the two Hernandezes, the two Williams brothers, the two Torams alongside Jacob Ramsey and Felix Nemecha. So our team was ready to go for season one and the hope was we could at least stay up and that way we could start building on our team as time went by. And season one definitely helped us learn a lot about this team that we created because even though we lost a lot of games, sometimes the connection between the brothers just helped us get over the line. Like when Kefram Torem scored the opener against Chelsea, Unkunku equalised. But after a nice bit of build-up play between the two Hernandez brothers, the ball filtered through Quinton Timber to find one Toram. He found one of our Williams brothers who then played it across to Marcus Toram to score as the winner against Chelsea. But as you can see, our form was a little bit hit and miss. Sometimes we won three games in a row, other times we went on a five game loss streak. Thankfully though, we just won more than we lost with 17 wins and 16 losses, 56 points. And that means there was 11 teams below us, including Manchester United, which means we now have 11 points to buy some new players. And I decided we were going to spend eight of those points bringing in the McAllister brothers. Obviously that means we get access to Alexis McAllister, the Argentinian World Cup winner, but also his brother, Kevin McAllister, who gives us some great versatility on the back line. And you can see why this squad might not quite cut it because despite having stars in a lot of positions, in some positions, no offense Lucas Zidane, we're not very strong at all. Now I'm sure you guys can let me know in the comments if I've missed any brotherly pairs out. I'd genuinely be curious to know because I feel like there must be some players out there who could definitely help us out. And speaking of helping us out, if you could help me out, I massively appreciate it if you could smash the like button on the video and subscribe for more content like this. Do you like the way I weave that in there? I thought, I thought that was pretty good. And with our new edition of the McAllister brothers, we are predicted the grand ninth place yet again. 50 to 1 odds. According to the game, there's no chance of winning the title just yet, but we're still going to give it our best shot. And again, it was a mixed bag of a season, but towards the end of the year, we had to face off against Manchester United and a win would get us into a European place. Very early on, the ball was picked up by our man Jacob Ramsey. He found Tammy Abraham to open the scoring against United. Then new signing Alexis McAllister made it 2-0 from the penalty spot with 20 minutes on the clock at Old Trafford. And then our brotherly connection helped with one Hernandez playing it to the other. The ball was headed out to James Tavernier. And if you thought this team was full of just star players, 
players. It's all of these squad players that are really helping us out. He made it 3-0. Now the score ended up being 3-1, but we didn't care. Because in our second season, we had qualified for European football. It was a conference league spot. It was a sixth place finish, but 67 points, 21 wins is certainly a good bit of progress. Marcus Taram was one of the league's top goal scorers with 26 goals, with a lot of those assists coming from his brother, who had the most assists in the league with 12. And despite having star names that play for the likes of Liverpool, PSG and AC Milan, it's been a team effort. Players like Sean Longstaff might not play too often, but according to the ratings chart, he's been our second best player when on the pitch. Now mind you, there are some players like Timmy Abraham and Matty Longstaff that aren't even getting a sniff of the football pitch, but there are some players that are still young and getting better. Take Ben Sidade, for example, who's only 19, but is developing and hopefully will be able to contribute with his brother in a few years. So a sixth place finish earns us 14 points to spend on new players. Combined with the three points left over from last season, we now had 17 points to start upgrading this team. We mentioned getting young players for the future, and we've got one of those in Joe Bellingham. Maybe not great just yet, but a lot of potential. But the real reason we spent 13 points on the Bellingham brothers was for this man, Jude Bellingham. He's our star player and would be for pretty much any team in world football. So with those points spent, we had four left over, which isn't quite enough to get the Sane brothers, but we'll be trying to unlock them next season. Now though, this team doesn't have to just compete in the Premier League. They'll be heading into Europe too. So we're going to have to rely upon some of those brothers on the bench to really help us out. And for those interested, despite getting Conference League last season, it looks like we've been boosted to Europa League. I assume another team won a competition and one of those European places trickled down and we are very thankful for it. So now with the Bellinghams and the McAllisters in our team, we're hoping we can push on in the Premier League and also try and give Europe a good shot. But unfortunately, it wasn't a great year for us in the Premier League. We finished in ninth place, 52 points, far less than before. I think playing European football really took it out of us. But you might notice we have qualified for the Champions League. And that's because we were in the Europa League and we made it to a final against Roma, where Kefram Toram scored this brilliant volley. And then Nico Williams would have made his brother Anaki proud as he watched on for the bench with this fantastic turn past Cliver into the box to make it 2-0 in the 70 sixth and that meant somehow despite finishing ninth in the Prem on 53 points we won the Europa League qualifying us for the Champions League. Now you think Jude Bellingham might have been the star of the season but he was only our fourth best player and only hit six goals. Marcus Toram continues to be our main man up top. Him and McAllister combined scored 50 goals between them. One of the unsung heroes of this team though is Martin Darde the Hungarian now 24 year old who's played 22 matches for us this season and hasn't maybe been amazing but he's been a key squad player for us during the course of this experiment. A ninth place finish means 11 points to add to our tally combined with the four points for last season, that's now 15 points to spend on new incomings. So we went ahead and picked up two pairs of brothers, spending five points on the Sarnes, that's Sidi Sarne, who isn't very good, but Leroy Sarne definitely is, and he's a great addition to our wide areas. And we also spent 10 points on the Hoylands. That includes well-known Manchester United striker Rasmus Hoyland, as well as his brother Oscar, currently at Copenhagen Hagen bought by Juve in this save and has developed into a nice little player. So in our penultimate season, we've got nowhere near the title just yet. And this is the team that's going to be competing both in England and in the Champions League, which now features the Timber brothers as well as the Hernandez brothers. And Anaki Williams has now been shoved out of the team to make way for Leroy Sane. Here's how our team is laid out in terms of ability. But a big problem we're now facing is James Tavernier, who was once our starting right back, is now 34 and considered one of the most useless options in our squad but he's not as useless as Timmy Abraham who still hasn't had a single minute on the pitch. I really hope he'll be the guy that doesn't play a single game and then somehow plays a Champions League final and scores a winner. And who knows, maybe it'll be this season. And in season four, we actually gave a Champions League a good go, making it to the round of 16 where we faced off against RB Leipzig. And early on in the second leg, we managed to go ahead through new signing Rasmus Hoyland. And just before half time, Timber threw it to Nico Williams, who crossed it in. And after a bit of a scruffy goal, new signing Leroy Sane made it 2 0. In the 50th minute, though, Leipzig came back through Willy Orban from a corner. And then a set piece in the 75th found Orban again, who headed it down to a pender. And I don't want to say Lucas Zidane is 
is causing a problem in goal, but he's clearly not as good as everyone else. Saying that though, it led to a penalty shootout where Jude Bellingham actually missed, and that caused us to get knocked out of the Champions League. So maybe it's actually our best players who are underperforming, and actually these guys that aren't very good are overperforming in this team. But it was one of our best seasons yet, a seventh place finish with a 60 point total. We're definitely improving compared to last year. Now I promise you I actually set these points totals before the start of this experiment, but thankfully we've ended up with 13 points from this last season, which is only just enough to buy both Kylian Mbappe and Ethan Mbappe. Who is Ethan Mbappe you might ask? Well, it's Kylian's younger brother who's playing at PSG and in this save he's been quite good for PSG's second team, appearing a few times for their first squad and has grown into a nice little player at the age of 20. But of course, the reason that we wanted him was so that we could get access to his brother, one of the world's, if not the world's best player at this stage. It's 28-year-old Kylian Mbappe who comes in as our star man. With Jude Bellingham in this team as well, I feel like nothing could go wrong. Although saying that, our team is definitely top heavy because we've got a very good forward line, even midfield, but it's in our defence where we've got Shalaba and Luka Zidane in goal, where really we're not quite up to scratch, particularly when you think their backup players aren't very good either. But now we head into our final season. With our great players and our poor players, it doesn't matter because combined, they are one squad, one team of brothers, and fingers crossed they can win the Premier League. And as you can imagine, having Mbappe in your team, as well as a now settled June Bellingham, meant that we started playing far better than ever before. And that led us to a Carabao Cup final this season, where Mbappe opened a scoring from the spot after six minutes. Then, only a few minutes later, Fio Hernandez found Alexis McAllister to Mbappe, a real star team now this is. He found Hoyland, who took the ball away, past Chelsea goalkeeper Koble to make it 2-0. And only a few minutes later, we piled on the misery to the Blues, with Bellingham finding Mbappe, he managed to find Hoyland and he stuck it in to make it 3-0. And before half time, we went again, really making a mockery of that Chelsea defence. Bellingham was on the edge of the area. He managed to curl a shot again, found Hoyland. He got his hat-trick in the first half. And if four goals wasn't enough in the 54th minute, Mbappe found Bellingham. He found Alexis McAllister and his strike ended up finding the back of the net. That was 5-0 and we won the Carabao Cup. And Chelsea must have hated us because we also faced off against them in a Europa League final an all-English tie between two London clubs. Rasmus Hoyland continued to terrorise that Chelsea defence. He made it 1-0, and then in the 45th minute, Leroy Sane took the ball on the left-hand side. He played it through, and it was tapped in by Urien Timber. I say tapped in. Pretty good finish, actually. But we weren't done there. We beat them 5-0 in the Carabao Cup. We didn't quite get 5-0 in the Europa League final, but Ben Sidade managed to slot the ball in to make it 3-0 on the night, and that meant we had a Carabao Cup and a Europa League win. And for those interested, here is Ben Sadade now. He's a £35 million player, developed very well from the 17-year-old that we initially inherited. But of course, we were here to win the Premier League, and it was a head-to-head -head battle between us and Arsenal for the title, and we knew we had to win on the final day of the season to stand any chance. And in the 39th minute, Alexis McAllister managed to tuck away a scruffy shot into the bottom corner. And with 17 minutes on the clock, Jacob Ramsey picked up the ball. The ball ended up falling out to Tavernier, who's still playing for us. He found McAllister who tapped it in, that made it 2-0. Forrest did get one back, but we won 2-1. But unfortunately, that was not enough. We ended up finishing on 85 points, one point away from the title, which was gutting, to be honest with you. I wanted to win the Premier League in this challenge, but to win two Europa Leagues and a Carabao Cup certainly wasn't a bad effort. Mbappe wasn't even our best player. Marcus Thuram and Hoyland got 50 goals between them, with Mbappe getting 19. Still a pretty good return, mind you. So it was gutting that we missed out on that Premier League title. Title. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments. There must have been a brotherly pair I missed that could have just helped us get over the line. There must have been someone out there that I didn't find. But either way, we answered the question, can a team of brothers win the Premier League title? At least with me in charge, the answer's no.